Не рыдай меня, мать, в игробе зрящая. Хор ангелов великий час вославил, И небеса расплавились в огне. Отцу сказал, по что меня оставил? А матери, ну не рыдай меня. Магдалина билась и рыдала, Ученик любимый каменел. А туда, где молча мать стояла, Так никто взглянуть и не посмел. Anna Akmanova's elegiac poem, Requiem, is a story unto itself, a story well known among her readers. She began writing it in protest against Stalin's purges of the 1930s and 1940s, and as a commemoration of those who had been killed or imprisoned in the gulags at the hands of Moscow's government. The secret police had killed her own first husband, and the son they'd had together was repeatedly arrested and held in Stalin's prison camps. Akhmanovan knew well that the Soviet state would never permit her poem to be published. In fact, she was so certain that she would be arrested and executed, just like her husband had been, if her poem was found. And so she committed the whole work to memory, burning successive drafts as she wrote them. Even so, if it could not be published, there was little assurance that the poem, even though it was in her mind, would endure. But what if she were arrested anyway? She felt a deep responsibility to all of those who were being persecuted and killed to use the power of her poetry to testify against the cruelty and injustice around her. How could she make sure the poem outlived her. Akmanova solved the problem by using something that she called a post-Gutenberg solution. She taught a small circle of her friends, all women, to learn the poem by heart. When she added to the poem, and even when she rewrote parts of it, she taught the new version to them, insisting that they remember it in place of the old version. Instead of writing her poem down on paper, she wrote it on the hearts and the souls of her friends. And in that way, the message of her poetry triumphed even over the power of a state armed with prison camps and executioners. It's not hard to see the parallels between the brutality under which Akhmadova lived and wrote and the tragedy we see unfolding in our own day in Ukraine. We see the images of civilians being targeted by missiles. We read in the press about neighbors turning against each other, just like in the purges of old. We don't know yet who the poets are who will give voice to the thousands of innocents who have been killed, or the millions who have fled their homes. We don't know yet how the truth will be able to push through the layer upon layer of lies and deceits given so much perverse power by social media just to see the sunlight again. And because of that, it's easy for us to be spiritually stuck in Good Friday right now. We see with our own eyes how fragile goodness is, how vulnerable truth can be. They do not defend themselves, at least not immediately, and not forcefully. They seem laid bare before the brute force of an invading army. It feels like our call to walk in love, to be disciples of the one who taught us to love our enemies and turn the other cheek, all of that is marking us down as either fools or victims. And we are tempted tempted by despair, tempted to fight brutality with brutality of our own. Near the end of Requiem, Akhmatova suddenly shifts from images of prison camps and the menacing power of a police state to the scene at Golgotha and the Passion of Christ, the weeping of his mother and the shock of the beloved disciple. It is no accident that she does this. Because in that place, too, outside the gates of Jerusalem, brute force seemed to be utterly triumphant over the weakness of love, 
the power of a cruel state seemed totally indifferent to suffering and sorrow. And yet, as Akhmatova knew, that was not the end of the story. Without knowing how the evils around her would be overcome, she kept writing. Without knowing how her poem could possibly survive, she kept teaching it to her devoted friends. And today, decades later, her poem endures. It testifies to the truth of what happened. If it does not restore the lives that were lost, it at least redeems the truth of their suffering. And it stands as a warning to the tyrants of our own day. The justice may be slow, but it is as unyielding and as inexorable as the dawn that follows the night. Of course, that's just what Akhmatova saw in the crucifixion story as well. She saw a story that did not end with the weeping mother or the sorrowing disciple under a darkening sky. There is more to the story, an ending that is a new beginning, a reversal of fortune that destroys not just death, but the dealers of death, and that reveals love itself as the transformative power that overcomes all. We live these days in a Good Friday moment. So much death and destruction has been unleashed in our weeks of Lent. Just when we thought our long COVID years could not possibly get any worse, the specter of war has again overshadowed Europe. We cannot know how all of this will end. But beyond the limit of our ability to see, we are, we must be, people of faith. We are the inheritors of those disciples who saw with their own eyes the execution of their friend on a cross and who did not know that Easter would come. And yet, even in their despair and confusion, they believed. So must we. We cannot reach the empty tomb by any path other than the way of the cross. It is the scandal by which God confounds the power of this world and overwhelms even the agents of death by embracing and transforming them through the work of love. That is what Easter brings us, and we know that it waits for us, certain as the dawn at the end of this nighttime of sorrow. <laughs>